We are back with tech news. This week was probably, if not, no, definitely the wildest week in tech. I mean, there is so much that happened that we will be covering. But before we do, when I say we, I am referring to myself and my coworker, Steve, of course. Hi. How's it going, Steve? You know, I pay him minimum wage, but he does his job. He gets by. Okay, sorry, I'm so cheesy today. All right, in all seriousness though, this week was one of the biggest weeks that will go down in tech history. I'm sure you all know, at least I hope you do, what I'm referring to, which is what happened with OpenAI. Aside from that though, there were some other really big things that happened this past week in tech that we will be covering right now. Oh, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and... All right, now let's get into it. It really supports me, by the way. Like it. It helps my channel, it helps me make content for you. I love y'all. All right, before we get into it, one other thing I wanted to share with you all. If you haven't heard, I am now the founder of my own company, which is just wild to say, and it's all because of you. I launched recently, actually under two weeks ago, we launched Takeoff, which is a platform where you can go to level up your career, your knowledge, your learnings, all centered around tech. One of the biggest reasons for me to create Takeoff was I really wanted to hear from real people, real people working within the tech industry who had different stories to share, different experiences to share, who were experts, VPs, CEOs, maybe even junior people, but people who were actually in the tech industry. I felt everywhere I looked there were courses and courses on top of courses, but so what? Where are the people, where are the stories that I can relate to, that you can relate to? to feel motivated and have that network to really build onto your career. Hence, we created Takeoff. Takeoff is a place where you will find classes from speakers that will talk about how to grow and elevate your career to stand out, how to get that really high paying salary. We're also going to be introducing workshops which will cover coding, public speaking, resume building, and so much more. So make sure to go sign up today and I will see you on Takeoff. Oh, by the way, we have a Slack channel as well, which is private to all Takeoff members, founding members. Let's start with OpenAI, the biggest tech news, of course. And what I thought would be interesting, as I'm sure so many of you are already familiar with a lot of the bits and pieces from the news with OpenAI, is to give you a full timeline, a full breakdown. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I felt like every day something new was coming up. I kept on hearing different things. So let's take this step by step, starting with November 16th, which was Thursday. It was last Thursday, which feels like forever ago at this point. So last Thursday, according to a post from one of the co-founder, Greg Brockman, he mentioned in his post, which was on Friday, that Thursday night, Sam got a text Thursday evening about a scheduled Friday noon call. This was the call where the news broke. Fast forward to Friday, right after the meeting, another big news broke, which was Brockman announced that he is going to be quitting OpenAI as well. If they're letting Sam go, he's not staying as well. So now we've lost Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, all to open AI in a matter of 24 hours. Now, as a side note, a lot of people are speculating, why did Sam get let go in the first place? This was the board's decision, and I don't really want to share one speculation or another because there is no 100% answer at this point, and I don't want to spread false information, but there are a lot of skeptics saying it was because of some different practices going on that he was partaking in. Some employees were saying that it was because, I don't know, it just it, let's just say it was because of the board for now. I don't wanna get into all that. Now, still on Friday, Sam Altman tweeted this. I loved my time at OpenAI. It was transformative for me personally and hopefully the world a little bit. Most of all, I loved working with such talented people. Okay, so he's announcing it. Very classy announcement, I must say. Then let's scroll to November 18th, which is a Saturday. So I guess 24 hours since he was let go. He tweeted, today was a weird experience in many ways, but one unexpected one is it's kind of been like reading your own eulogy while you're still alive. The outpouring of love is awesome. So at this point, OpenAI employees were furious. Over 500 out of the 700 employees were threatening to quit. And I don't even think it was really threatening. I think it was they are going to quit if Sam didn't come back. It was very, there was so much tension in the air. And it was around this time though, that Altman actually agreed to go on to, it was Sunday night, Altman agreed to go on work for Microsoft. Now with him going to work for Microsoft, Greg as well said he would join Microsoft too. So Microsoft at this point is thinking, this is amazing, this is great. Uh, you know, they, they're loving it. 
Now, I remember waking up Tuesday morning and looking at the news and thinking, this can't be right, this is old news. Sam Altman returns as CEO to OpenAI. Something I thought would happen, I mean, we've seen this with so many incredible uh, tech founders of companies from Steve Jobs, Jack Dorsey, the list goes, Steve, you know, my Steve over there, uh, but the list goes on. But I thought it would take a few years. I didn't think he would return this quickly, but this really shows the power of community employees really, really routing or rooting for you and coming together. If it wasn't for OpenAI employees threatening to quit at such a mass scale, I don't think he would have been back this quickly. He tweeted, or OpenAI tweeted, they have reached an agreement in principle with Sam Altman to return as CEO for OpenAI. And also too, I'm sure Sam had so much leverage in that meeting, the board did a 180 as well for a lot of their members. So new boards include Brett Taylor as a chair, Larry Summers and Adam D'Angelo. What a wild, under a full week for open AI. And I think it's just going to get wilder, to be honest. I think this is the beginning. Imagine Sam in that room, the negotiating power he had to get back with open AI at this point. They knew they needed him back. Everyone was threatening to quit. He has a lot of power in his hands right now. Most importantly though, I think this is going to make for an excellent movie one day. All right, next up, another big thing that happened in tech this past week, which kind of, well, definitely was overshadowed by everything with OpenAI, is going back to the world of crypto. We haven't spoken about crypto for a while. I feel like it's kind of fallen into the shadows, but there's still some really hardcore crypto lovers. This though I found really interesting. Binance and CEO CZ, I think I'm saying that right? CZ, CZ, pled guilty to federal charges and agreed to pay 4.3 billion in fines. So where did things go wrong for him? CZ pled guilty to multiple charges and the crypto exchange admits it engaged in anti-money laundering, unlicensed money transmitting and sanction violations. That doesn't sound too good. And then I think this is really interesting here. One of the attorneys states this, the message here should be clear. Using new technology to break the law does not make you a disruptor, it makes you a criminal. And that kind of sums it up, 4.3 billion. Does he have enough to pay that? That feels like you'd just be working your entire life to pay that off. I don't know, what do you think? It's really interesting. They say here that the crypto exchange company collected 1.35 billion in trading fees from US customers, according to the chairman of the CFTC. Now, to me, this is just wild. When you think of how quickly crypto rose to the top, everyone was all about it. You know, these companies were making so much money and we've seen the rise and the very hard fall of some other people in this industry. This is the latest victim to, no, not victim, that's the wrong word, latest person, I should say, to crumble because of it. Actually, on that note, I'm curious, are you still in crypto, blockchain world? Like, what are your thoughts around that? Last thing I wanna cover with you today is not necessarily tech or trending tech news, but something that has been in the tech news this past week, which is this new cool tool, cool tool called TL Draw. And I've been tinkering around with it. I'll share some videos that I put together for it on screen here, but essentially what it is, listen to this, list how wild this is. You can draw something. So a calculator, in my case, I drew a snake game or uh, a URL shortener. Literally just sketch it. Sketch it in their notepad. What this will do, you put in your OpenAI key, you select the image you just drew, generate, it will generate full functioning code of what you just drew. I was mind blown. I was like, there's no way this is possible. It is possible, it is here. This is the direction we are moving in. I was, it really blew me away. For example, in the snake one, I drew a snake game, I put in here, you gotta be specific and a little bit actually, the, the programmers, the way they made it is you actually have to be a bit cheeky with it. So you have to really encourage the AI that it's a good coder, it has good skills. Ridiculous, but kind of funny. And once you do that, you highlight the game that you just drew or whatever, you know, full functioning website and it will output the code for you. And this is really wild. I think this is the beginning of seeing how transformative AI will really take uh, software development. It's not going anywhere, but it definitely is changing at a very quick pace. These technologies right now are great for little games, tinkering around, starting a side project, but this is the worst technology will ever be. And I always remind myself of that when you really think this is the worst this tech will be. It's going to continue to improve, get smarter, faster, better. And it did so, so quickly, it's pretty mind blowing. So I just wanted to share that tool with you. It's open source. I'll link it down below as well so you can go tinker around with it. It's just a fun thing to do and see what's possible out there. 
there. All right, those are the biggest, the top biggest news in tech this past week, obviously with a huge focus on OpenAI. And leave down below if you like these tech news videos. What else did I miss? Is there anything you feel like I missed from this week? I feel like it was mainly OpenAI. All right, I'll see you all soon. Hit that subscribe button. Bye.